Skills of Ravnica Draft with Simon. Um, all right, so what, of, uh, what you want to aim for is often a guild, and then uh, you can maybe splash something. If you get a gate, you get a gate in every pack. Rare is bad. This card is very good though. Five and a green for a four, four, that's fight, so not a creature. May, so if the only creature your opponent has is a large creature, you don't have to fight. Uh, if this is the first night at Fight Club, you have to fight. Doesn't work on this card. I think Lowest to Shaman is fine, but it, at the end of the day, it's a free one for two that gives you a little bit of value, and then you can trade it off. So it's not a super huge payoff. I'm going to take Affectionate Indrik. I um, think um, the card is very good, so I'm happy about that. I think Faultbound Phantasm is a very solid card too, if you're Jimmy here, but I'm just going to take the best card, which is Affectionate Indrik. And if we will the Glow or Shaman, which we don't, we could be Golgari. It's also Guild Gate, but I don't think you want to prioritize the Guild Gates too high if you're on color. Did I just say uh, Golgari? <laughs> this is one of the excellent payoff cards. This is a free four that gives you a permanent card back, which is usually the card you want to get back anyway. Other great cards are Rampaging Monuments, I think is a good card for almost any deck. It's a free free trample for four. Then we cause a multi course but you get, you get a counter. That would probably be my second choice. I also have a Watcher in the Mist here. But I think that I'm going to take this card. It's just an excellent value card. I mean, a 3 4 for 4 is already almost playable by its own. And then you get uh, something back. And Golgari has a self mill theme, which means that you can often get kind of a um, tutor effect uh, by getting a large creature in your graveyard and getting it back. Also has some death touch creatures, so it's almost always easy to get uh, something back. Ramaging Monuments is very impressive though, but striking my uh, setting up here. Okay, so always have to look at this uh, uh, multiple card if you can cost any of the half. This time I can't because it's red white hybrid, but it is a lightning helix for four mana, which is not super great, but playable of course. There is nothing really good here. I don't like Shadow of Night too much. This isn't life, black white life game deck. Beacon Vault is also solid, but it's an Isset card. So if I were to take a good card here, I would have to abandon my first two cards. Wild Ceratoc is playable, but not super good. But I think I'm going to take it here. I have two Golgari cards, and I would have to abandon both to take any of these cards. And They're not super insane. This card is solid, but it's not incredible okay so now we have uh, Dimmer Guild Gate which as I mentioned if you want to splash there is also a center of Peacemaker which I could take because I could abandon Golgari and go Celestia so another question I think Dev can Dev Karin Descent is not super good it's playable but I'm going to take Center Peacemaker here. I only have one Golgari card. And if I end up abandoning Golgari and go Celestia instead, uh, that could be good. Not seeing anything else. I mean, Skyline Legionary is good, but we're not really uh, Boros. So, okay. This is a nice one. Generous Stray, 2 and a green for a 1 2, and dice you draw a card. So it's nice in Golgari because you can play it. Jump block, you're not even down a card, and then you can either get it back or get some scavenge going. I like Whispering Snitch in Demir, but not Elf. Whispering is uh, another option. Also works nicely in uh, Golgari because it mills you for one. But I think Generous Stray is a nice one. There is a common in black, which is, uh, I don't know the name, Severed Strands, which is one in a black for you sacrifice a creature and destroy a creature. That works very nice with Generous Stray, and it's good in general in Golgari. So I'm hopefully going to pick up some of those. And it looks like Demir is pretty open with the Fault Erasure and Notion Rain as good cards. I don't like very Okapi. So there's two cards here. Uh, there is Somalia Wood Shaper. If I end up being uh, Celestia, that's good. Or is Urban Utopia if you want to splash some blue cards. I'm gonna sort by color here and actually take the Somalia wood shaper. I think that if you uh, 
end up being Celestine. It's good because it tutors up a creature, then you can tap it for, to convoke it. So, all right. We have this card, which I don't think is that good, honestly. Uh, it's uh, you have this card, a creature card, so you're never gonna get get to blow your opponent out, but uh, against Trample, but it's hard to do that over and over again. There is no white card here and no great one green card, I mean, this is a sideboard card. I like Burglarette for some of the same reasons I like Generous Stray. It's a value card you can play early, Champ Block, and you're not even down a card. And then you can also sacrifice several strands. So I'm gonna take Burglarette and go back a little bit to Golgari. Armsita Brat I don't like at all. I think it's uh, similar to um, Severed Strands in that you sacrifice a creature to kill a creature, but you also, this is four mana and harder to cost. So I'm more looking at like higher poison. I think Righteous Blow is not really great in Celestia because you want creatures to convoke cards and then remove, and then cards that deal with uh, expensive creatures. I think Celestia is pretty easy time to handle small creatures. But High Person is nice, traded off early, and wow, we did get the Glow Spur Shaman back. Okay, I will take it. I think it's better than the Gate. And uh, yeah, this gives me some value. So now I'm uh, gonna lean towards being Golgari. And yeah, now I just need to pick up some Scavenge cards. Okay, uh, I'm gonna take Gateway Plaza in case I end up wanting to splash something. I think never happen, it's not super important. So, don't think this card is good enough to splash, because you want it on curve. If you cost this on turn six, it's not that good. All right, now I can take the never happen. I think one of Ver Vertebra, a lot of hard names in this set, is a scavenge enabler, but you're down a card, and the other ability just shuffles cards back. So, no, I think I want the never happen if in case I play against a bomb. And uh, all right, might as well take another gateway plaza. But you don't want to play too many of these because they're incredibly clunky. You're, you're coming to play tap and soak up another mana, so you can take a huge tempo if, if you play against um, Boros. That could be uh, very scary. Thousand of Lies, I would prefer not to play, but I'm gonna put it here for now. And this is where I want to open Assassin's Trophy. <laughs> I'll take the rare to the two black, black, green, green that creates a creature for each card in your graveyard. I'll take the two. Ooh, we may play that card. It's not out of the question. We're really looking for some um, payoffs, scavenge payoffs. I, think, I mean, it's playable. I just don't think this card is that great. Also, always looking for uh, price of fame. Free in a black destroy creature. Cost two less if you if it's a legendary creature, and you get to surveil too. There's also the free black black common. Uh, <laughs> speak of the devil. I think we're gonna take it here. I mean, uh, conclave cavalry is very good, but we kind of abandoned uh, white at this point. I think it is better than Deadly Visit, but Deadly Visit is a nice card that actually uh, plugs a hole in this deck. This deck has problem with not having a removal spell. Uh, we do have a Higher Poisoner as a Death Touch creature, but doesn't block flyers. Siege Room is also nice, but it's more a Celestia card. I probably will play it in Golgari. And Lothlet Giant is, I think, a, a little too expensive of a payoff. Though I could see myself playing it. But this is a pretty easy deadly wizard in my mind. Surveil so working nice with scavenge, which at some point I hope we can get a card like that. But I like a curve. I mean we have some early defensive cards on the ground. Gonna have a little bit of trouble against flyers, so we may want to pick up the, the two and a green for a one for reach at some point. But here is a good card that uh, is better than the one for reach I was just talking about. Moodmark Painter is a payoff too, but I think Deadweight is just too good. And, uh, yeah, it kills flyer like Sky Knight Legionnaire. 
I think it's better than Generous Stray. If I had a million copies of Severed Strands, I could see Generous Stray. Yeah, Dead Weight is awesome. Ooh, another Guild Mage. So, this is not a great pack for us. I don't think we want two Burglar Rats. It's possible, but they are a little bit bad of a, of a top deck. I don't think this card is good enough to splash. I think the only good ability is the second one, and it's pretty expensive. Port Coolis Vine, we don't have any other defenders. There's also Iron Shell Beetle. This is a solid card. I think it's a good playable card. So I think I'm gonna take that card and uh, not be too impressed. I could take Port Coolis Vine because it uh, enables scavenge, but Ooh. Emara Soul of this card is a bomb. Let's see here. There is also a second copy of Affectionate Invicto. So even this card I think is very good. It's at its best in Celestia. Because if you don't can't convoke with it, it's hard to attack. If you attack with this, they trade, you get a 1-1 life. Link. Yeah, you're ahead. I mean, it's a good card, but uh, you're not super far ahead. Whereas this card is just a uh, very good payoff. So I'm going to take Affectionate Invic over Emora. Uh, yeah. Looks like maybe uh, being Celestine would have worked out a little bit better, but all right. Here we have a payoff, a little bit expensive, on nine mana, costs less for each creature card in your graveyard, and we're also gonna get the land card from your graveyard to battle, not the payoff I'm looking for. I'm gonna take the severed strands. I was talking about it earlier, and we have some nice uh, fodder for it in the burglar at generous stray. Bigger Spirum Worm is also a nice payoff, but I think it's easier to pick up that than a Severed Strands. I want one Severed Strands with this setup, and I don't think Mordrulk is particularly good anyway. At some point, you, you may ask yourself, are there really any good payoffs for Golgari? I think there are. There are the 2-2 two, two, for 4 that grows, but the, some of the payoffs are a little bit weak, I have to say. A little bit weak. Maybe Gulgar is not a great color combination just because of that. We'll see. Um, we do have some nice affectionate Indrik. I wouldn't mind to get a mana ramp, so a Golgari Locket would be a very nice addition to the deck. It would draw me cards, would ramp me into the affectionate Indrik. Ah, here we have it. The question is, is it better than the Crowl Forgers, another undergrowth payoff? <laughs> Um, yeah, I think it is. I think Ulgar Locket is very important, and I think it's easier to pick up these Forgers than it is to pick up a Locket, just because I don't think Celestia is too interested in that, so... Celestia keeps being open, though. But yeah, I really like to have a ramp card when I have two affectionate in it. This doesn't have to be like a scavenge deck. It doesn't have to be a scavenge deck. Uh, it could just be uh, good... Um, Solid green black creatures with two for ones and removal and value. Okay, here I'm gonna take another higher poisoner. I don't have any good blue card to splash. I think this is a fine card, but I'd rather have a death touch creature. All right, play crafter. That's an interesting one. Um, it's very nice with Generous Stray and the Burglar Rat, so I think it works fine. And there's nothing else here that's great. The Veil Shade is fine. Alright, now I'm gonna take the Lofflet Giant. I think that it's a fine finisher. And we did pick up a Golgari Lock, so I still don't think Guild Gates are super important. I will play one or two Guild Gates, but I'm gonna have to take a payoff. Here's another payoff. Works nice if you have some life in creatures. But there is also a Hitch Chloric Clues, and as I said before, I think that card is important against the Boros deck, which has flyers. They have the two on that against flying on attack, they have a Sky Knight Legionnaire. And I have some finishers in the Factions in the Lofflet Giant. I think I can finish the game, even though uh, this card is. Okay, here I'm going to take the Port Coolis Wine, but I may not play it. Doesn't matter. Uh, 
still want to open um, Assassin's Trophy. <laughs> Someone took some of the payoff cards. Not sure about the Portugal's wine, not sure about the Iron Shell Beetle. Most other cards are locked in though. I'm not sure about this either, I guess. Usually when you're green, you can find better cards than this. Ground Secrets, well, that is not great. We have another chance at the Severed Strand. It looks a little bad to play two. Uh, wow, this is a good uh, Boros pack. Rock Charger, Inescapable Blaze. And yeah. So, do I want two Severed Strands? We don't have that many good Sacrifice Outlets, but we could pick up some more. The alternative is to take a Whisper Agent, which I think is okay. I'm gonna take another Severed Strands. Ooh, Price of Fame, nice. It's basically a deadly wizard, but strictly better in almost every other scenario. And uh, yeah, uh, if we can wheel a Wager Spine Worm, I will replace Dowser of Lies with that. But yeah, Price of Fame is great. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Maybe I don't need to play two several strands just because I picked up the Price of Fame. But we have 22 playables, I usually play 23, so. I think this is okay. And also play crafter means that F two several strands may not be good. So maybe I should have taken the whisper agent. May have been a little bit of a mistake. Alright, here we have a good one. It's either the best part is of course a statue, but even the status part is good. I think that uh, here's the payoff I was looking for. I really would love to wheel resume lurcher, but we're not really there. Five months research is a sweet one. Circus route is also a sweet one, but we have an incredible option in this card. So yeah, four mana destroy almost anything relevant, except lands and planeswalks, I guess. And then the status can you really get some people because people don't expect a one mana tree. Although I guess there is might of the masses. So at this point we have picked up so much removal that I may not even need double severed strands, but hey. This is uh, looking like a solid deck. I would like to get some... Uh, uh, bombs, but I think it's getting a little late. Do I have enough creatures for this? It's a very powerful card, and if I cast it, how are my opponents going to win? This could be a game plan. We just have a lot of removal spells, and then we're just gonna convoke out this nine mana. We have 16 creatures in our deck. So yeah, I think I'm gonna take that. I think it's better than the Sprout and Renewal. And the Burglar Rat, so. Oh, this card is a little surprising to go so late. It's um, two, two for two that you can uh, sacrifice to deal, you can deal two damage. Which is an uh, interesting playable. I think it's better than the Iron Shell Beetle. There's nothing else here that's great. I don't like the Moonmark Painter as I just described. So um, I'm just gonna take that and play it instead of an uh, Iron Shell Beetle. And yeah, I don't like Molder Hulk. I don't like Creeping Shield. I don't want to play two Hitch Clorer Clues. I guess I could take this in case. Just in case. So I'm cutting one of the several strands, I don't think I need to. And uh, nothing great here. I think second one of those. It's better than the Dark of Lights, I think. Ooh, we did get it back, nice. I think it's good in this deck. Like, actually, this isn't even the pack. There's a million copies of Grappling Sun you. And uh, yeah, nothing here. I'm to take to rare. <laughs> so let's cut uh, the portcullis spine, I think. Hmm. All right, we did build this. Picked 
that's a much better version of the two black black two three because just the two three is just so bad. And another Golgari locket. I may play two. Let's see here. Let's see. Maybe I can remove a Ceratok and Maybe I don't need the Lufflet Jan. I think this card is just better. Yeah, I was. It's hard to get card advantage in these colors, but I guess affectionate in with this card advantage. And whatever. All right. So let's see how this works out. We have a decent amount of removal spell. We got deadly visit, price of fame. Get deadly visit, price of fame. Uh, uh, and severed strands, dead weight, and this affectionate inlet. I'm a little worried about playing against. Um, some flyers, but we have the Hitch Claw Recluse. We're playing as a deck with a lot of flyers that may cyber out some higher poisons. Didn't get a Golgari lock, so it looks like a pretty easy 9 8 mana base in favor of swamps. Yeah. Like Chamber Sentry, it's a 2 2 for 2 if you have both colors, which you should. And you can uh, remove two camps to deal two damage any target, which could be a flyer. And then it's a creature card in your graveyard. You're never going to get it back, but I think it's a combination of being an early blocker and killing flyers. So yeah, this looks like a nice one. And let's play. Take the play. Yeah, it looks nice. Um, can ramp out and worm. We have some removals. And I think Demir could be a tough matchup too with the older card advantage, but it looks like we're playing against green. Could be like bug too. <laughs> against green, I'm not super impressed by the Hitch Claw and Clues, but we may sideboard it out. Or we can sacrifice it to play Craft. So yeah, Celestia. Ooh, well, I think I'm just gonna. All right, so that changes my plan. I was gonna just play Craft with the Wave because I'm scared about it. Let's make sure it doesn't have any crazy build now. So I'm down. Since I draw Dead Weight, I'm just gonna cost Golgari Locket and Dead Weight away. Because I don't want that card to go crazy. It also makes Play Craft the worst because they, they can sacrifice the token. All right. We both gain life, which I don't mind at this point. So I could either go play Craft, just get it out of the way, or I can play Hitch, Glory, Clues, and Block. Um, I'm just going to cost play Craft. I mean, I think it's going to get better than this. And then we can crack the locket if we end up being out of value. Wow, we're both going to have a lot of life. Severed Strand is not great here. I'm going to cast the Hitch Glory Clues because I want to keep the Locket in play, and there's no reason to waste a Deadly Wizard on my opponent's creature if I can just block it with Hitch Glory Clues. If I want to play some removal, things may change, but there's no reason to waste. Okay, so my opponent has 32 life. This is going to be a grind fest. That was not a good draw. One nice thing you can do with Chamber Sentry is to you can remove one counter and then sacrifice it to Severed Strand. But I think since I have the Severed Strand, I'm going to Deadly Wizard here look for a land. Okay, so 
Um, there's a land. There's also a gold guard locket. It does represent two cards, but I think it's a little too slow. So I'm gonna put that in my graveyard. And am I in a hurry to draw a land for biggest bull run? No, I'm actually gonna put it in the graveyard. Be a little bit greedy because I think this game is gonna go long. I don't wanna uh, end up flooding. So yeah, this may delay my uh, Vigor Spore Worm, but I'm not in a huge hurry to cast it. Okay, it's just a free two because I don't have any flyers in play or actually in my deck. I don't think I have any flyers in my deck. All right, so there's the land. That's why we did that. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna get to give this creature plus one plus one, but I still cannot. I don't really want to attack, so doesn't matter. So there's no point in attacking. This card is kind of nice because it has to count block or more than one creature ability, so it can't get double blocked here. I would love to draw the 4-4 four, four that fights, that would be nice. Okay, Flying Vigilance Mentor. Right now it's just a 2-3 Vigilance. Oof. Oof. So I'm going to attack, see what happens. I mean, if my opponent has a trick, that's going to happen if either way I whether I fight or not. And I'm gonna cast this because I will have a locket and a severed strand, so I'm just gonna eat up the flyer. I know I can block it, but they may have some pump spell, and the other two creatures doesn't do much anyway. Okay, so they have some red splashing going on. Yeah, I'm pretty impressed by this worm. The fact that it can't be bought by more than one creature is nice. Very nice. So let's attack. And I don't want to attack with Indrik because it just gets double blocked for not much value. I can wait next turn and maybe sacrifice a chamber center. So let's crack the locket. Like that. And oof. Oof. It's good. Cost the chamber sentry, which I can kill the crowd harpooner and then maybe attack with the injury. My opponent's gonna crack the locket here. So the opponent's gonna have a, get to restock, but I have a Golgari Fine Broker, which may even get back this card, so it's possible. I don't even mind if that card dies. Let's see here. Also have a both modes are pretty good right now. Wow, what's this? This is not looking good for me. <laughs> I'm afraid it's the create X one ones, which would be bad for me. Or it could be the, the creature that comes into play with X counters. That would be much more fun. Okay, that's much better for me. I was afraid that was going to be. Okay, so I don't mind that the affectionate Inri getting traded off. Um, I don't like uh, this trading for that, though that seems not great for me. So what I'm gonna do is kill that, you kill that. But at this point I think my opponent would have already cast their good cards. And then I'm gonna attack with these two. And if my opponent blocks the uh, Hindrik, I can get it back. Which just seems fine by me. Okay, I don't recommend doing that because now I can just use the chamber center to kill that and then keep the 4 4. So I don't like that play for my opponent. Because. 
they just got two for one. They should have blocked with this two. I mean, maybe they have plans that this can become a large, large creature, but it seems ambitious. So now that can become a 4-4, four, four, but I just do good call. Actually, yeah. So leave with this. I think at this point I'm fine trading away for this because Fury is 10 mana. This is a 6-6. Uh, six, six. So yeah, I don't like trading it away, but I'm actually going to send a recluse too, because if you want to eat that, it takes 10 damage, and that's, I think, worth it. The reason I don't want to use severed strands is because um, I want to keep that for some huge bomb. But this I'm fine with, so now I'm going to allow this and get, the, get it back. I'm not going to get back the Inric, but I think I'm fine getting back. This card, especially since I have a lot of creatures in my graveyard right now. Actually, I only have two. <laughs> but still. All right, so Celestia splashing red. I think I'm gonna take out the one for. I only saw one flyer, and I have some other removal spells that can be. I think one flyer is fine. So we're gonna take out that. And what do I want instead? I want this. This is an early creature that can block the Celestia, then you can cash it in for a card. I think my matchup is good as long as my opponent doesn't play some huge bomb. And my opponent has to double of the free fear that creates four fours. Actually, maybe I want this card just because I want four blocks all his free frees. And then I can block his flyer too. Yeah, so maybe I'm fine with that. Can I make my, my deck less? Can I make my deck more grindy some way? I could take out this card, which I don't even like, and put in the portcullis wine just to redraw, some, redraw a card if I end up being flooded. So yeah, I think that's a nice one. And if the game is grindy, I want Loveless Giant. But then again, my opponent plays three cards and gain life, so the ability gets taken away pretty fast. So yeah. This is fine. If I saw if if the creature he played had been the create X one once and you gain that much life, I would maybe cyborg in never happen. Yeah, this looks fine to me. A little bit uh, too much early game, but maybe we can draw something good. <laughs> or not. I mean, they are good against Celestia, just a little bit worried about against playing against Flyers. Like the two free Flyer with Mentor would be annoying here. Not pretty good too. Pretty good against my uh, Death Touchers, but I do have an O3 blocker, also could play Chamber Center and maybe kill that next turn. I think that's important to get rid of that, so... Next turn I can go Chamber Center, then next turn I can kill that guy before it can start mentoring and play a one -room. Three mana. Also, Price of Fame costs two mana against my opponent's uh, Legend, I don't remember the name. Emora Tandris or whatever. <laughs> okay. I don't mind that. I have a death touches for for days here. Pont didn't attack. I guess I could have double blocked, but alright, one black mana short of that, but I'm gonna play the portcullis wine here and keep mana open for this chamber center.
Okay, I'm gonna block. Let's see what happens. I'm actually gonna shoot right now, so my opponent cannot combo. Eventually, I'm gonna have to kill that thing. And this way, there's no combo being possible. Four, three, I can just kill that with my death. Oh, Kulgari, fine. I'm gonna shield a little bit on that because there is nothing super impressive to get back. So I'm gonna play another death toucher then. If my opponent kills my death toucher somehow, puts luminous bonds on it, I can then I can get it back. Get back to the other one, but I don't mind trading off here. Um, I think my late game is better from what I saw game one. It's possible my opponent has some insane bomb that I can't beat, but I have some two for ones in my deck. And I'm gonna catch this card in an end of turn, I believe, unless this is something. <laughs> All right, we can kill that if we have six mana. I may want to get back uh, my uh, poison in now. I'm going to sack this. Yeah. Okay. Forest is a little annoying, I'm not going to lie. Could get back to Portcullis by and draw on more cards later, or I can get back poison. I'm just gonna get back to Death Toucher though. Sadly, I can't cast it. It's gonna take six, but I am at twenty-four. <laughs> it could be bad if I play if I play game three and I play the one-one rat. And he discards this. It could be very bad for me. Maybe I want to side out the burglar rat because that would be a disaster. Okay, this is six. So we're gonna fight them, I guess. No. Oh, he wanted to cause some creatures, but of course, of course. What is this? Oh, oh that card seems unbeatable. Alright, uh, we're in trouble. <laughs> I'm gonna beat this card. I need to draw my uh, multicolor card. I did draw a nice one in Play Crafter, but I need to cost Play Crafter this turn to. I think I'm gonna sacrifice the Death Toucher because it doesn't do anything against this card, so. Yeah, we are in trouble now, because how am I going to beat this card? So you can jump block and draw a card for 6 mana. We need to draw the... Okay, that's large, but I can kill it, so it's not the end of the world. And he can't make a soldier either. Alright, well... There's no way to fight that thing. Digging desperately for my removal spell. Um, put some tilt. This is annoying because I think I, I'm, I'm actually. I think my opponent is a favorite to win this game, which makes it very annoying that my opponent is tilting off. I think I'm behind here. Six mana draw card, or or it can make two tokens. I almost want my opponent to draw like a free free here. That would be so perfect. All right, that I guess works. But my opponent can still make a creature. 
gonna pass the object here. Kill an opponent's creature. They can make a 1-1, one, one, but they, are pro they probably don't want a shunt block because then uh, they're not gonna draw any cards. Generous Stray was not a good draw. I think it's too slow here. They are gonna shunt block, but then they're not gonna draw any cards. Okay, yeah, let's see. Have to put super pressure on my opponent before they just take over the game. <sighs> that was a horrible draw. So yeah, I have to attack sadly. And then I'm gonna play a 4 3. They can trade for the playcraft or go up to 11, take 7, go down to 4. But then they can't make another creature, so they have to choose here. I guess you can draw two cards. Okay. All right. We'll see. I have some large creatures. I think. That is the good thing about this. But I want to put another leaf of threat down here, so generous tray have to wait. Nine mana. I think the game is very close. That's not great here, but uh, I should have played a generous stream pre combat. But yeah, here comes some one ones, one or two. If they're jumping with two, I'm actually think I'm fine just because uh, they're not drawing any cards. Have don't have to, yeah, okay, they have to. And so, I think I have any double colored cards. So let's just play that and play my land, I guess. They don't have any discard. But they did red water last turn. That's good. Okay. Gave me the GGs. Which I hope means he's gonna concede because sometimes people say GG and then they don't concede. This card seems like a stone cold bomb though. <sighs> okay, he's not gonna concede. That's I, I'm so annoyed by this. I'm just so annoyed when people say GG and don't concede. This is, if, you, if you're not going to concede, just don't say anything. Alright. What's going on here? Okay, it's just doing everything pre cool. Burglar rat. Can't cost that and So I'm just going to kill this and force some more shuttles. So I'm going to block my two biggest creatures, goes up to five, then takes exactly five. So unless there's some convoke fog in response, <laughs> we should have this. Okay. Seems fine, I can cause fine broker, but I have some sentry on turn two, removal spell, and this is often not a turn four play enemy. Uh oh, this is mono red. 
Oh, we could be in trouble. Oh, okay, at least we can cast a fine broker. We could get back the center. Oh, is it? Okay. Oh, 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 oh. The O4 that deals the damage every time I cause instant or sorcery. Okay, okay. It's not the worst. It's not the worst. Not the worst. Mountain and Goblin Electromancer. Alright, this card is not doing much, I'm just gonna kill the Electromancer now. Why not? Yeah, they can play some Flyer, but there's not too many Flyers in Is it that has two toughness. Alright, that could be a yeah, Flyer at some point. Ooh, dead weight. So now I have some options. I think I'm gonna cast a four drop just because of my mana situation. And uh, I think we're gonna go with the Ceratop because the fine rock getting back to two two is very slow. It will kill this, but I already have dead weight. And I'd rather get back something like a wild Ceratop. Alright, that's I'm gonna kill on sight, by the way. That card is just bonkers. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna take it trade three for four. And Okay, uh, probably not going to use the ability, but it could be nice to mill some sweet things for the fine book. But yeah, I guess I could technically attack, he blocks, and I cost dead weight, but I don't think that's going to happen. And this is also more mana efficient anyway. Yeah, both in my graveyard. Even though Reckless blocks the leapfrog, uh, I can just dead weight that, and I don't want to waste a draw. That, so. Let's put two cards in my grave. Okay, my opponent's deck is very good. Although this is just a O4 at this point. Could also get back the dead weight. Okay, let's start by attacking. There's no good blocks, and... Uh, I have some options. It's not necessarily that this is gonna have flying next turn, so I may not even need to uh, kill it. I'm gonna leave the glorious portion now. Then I'm gonna hope to mill some creatures. I milled one creature. Okay, I'm not gonna put the land back, of course. And then the Rissom Lurker is a 4 5 5, and it seems good. And I'm not even gonna take any damage next turn unless my opponent has an instant resource. So, yeah. Okay. At least this doesn't affect the board, though. I'm gonna take 3 or 4, probably 3. Uh, maybe, maybe more, but it doesn't um, affect the board. And if they want to jump start it, then the crackling break actually doesn't get sold. Never mind, I forgot. <laughs> it counts from uh, in some results. So how much am I taking here? Three. Okay. No. Oof. Okay, that was great. I can kill anything. Uh, I think I'm gonna kill the Cracking Drake because. Or am I? I'm definitely gonna cost it in Brick this turn. But what do I kill? The Leapfrog trades for the Wild Ceratok. So maybe it's better to kill the Ceratok. I can't attack with the Glowspur. The Glowspur Shaman doesn't do anything anyway. The dead weight trades for. Huh, this is interesting. I'm actually gonna kill the leapfrog. Because then I can attack with a 4 3, I think. Putting pressure on here is good. Okay. Normally, I mean, obviously this card is better than the leapfrog, but at this 
game state. I want to attack for four. Yes, now Deadweight cannot kill the Crackling Drake, but I can still weaken it. And it looks like it's game anyway. I like the Hitch Grow Recluse. It blocks the Leapfrog. It also blocks the Crackling Drake for a long time. So is there even anything I want to board in? I mean, Hired Poisoner is not great against the Flyers, but it does attack through his O4 wall. Yeah. May want this just as a finisher, but no. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna gamble here. Yeah. And this time I may even return a land. If I if I mill a forest, I may just get it back so I can get more things going on. But we could be in trouble. <laughs> that was not a good roll. Um I'm just gonna play the Death Toucher. It's more mana efficient to play the Rat, but my opponent has so many cards in there. All right, there we go. There's a free to flash, but that just trades, and who cares? So close for Shaman. Hopefully, I can. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the land back. It's great. If I can get the elemental in play, I'm probably going to win, but there is... Uh -oh. Well, I think we're going to have to kill that, so... What I'm going to do is play forest, so I have seven mana for the elemental. Yeah, this is unfortunate, but this thing, that thing needs to die. Skynet Legion, oh well. A bit of bone splinter action. And the lands would be nice. Okay, that's fine. That doesn't affect the board. Nine lands are nice. And I'm at eight mana, so I have to wait one more turn. Lands are good. Most spells are good. It's looking okay. He has two of those. That's not good for me. All right, I'm just... So if I attack here, we can have a spell and then... Uh... Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna cost this. Hope he doesn't have disdainful stroke. Okay. If I, this had killed this, I would have much rather done that, but that's not the world we live in. Okay, he didn't have a spell end of turn, that's nice. And the gate. Two murmuring mystic gate is brutal though, because it's champ blockers for this card. Hopefully this is a creature, no, it's a puffet scissor which kills a free one, I guess. But not the end of the world, because that was a lot of, uh, lot of mana spent. I think you should have done this before playing a kill gate, because what if you draw a spell you want to cast and you have a land? <laughs> okay, alright, so what do I want to do now? I think I want to cast the Indrik and fight the 1-1. One -one. No, some scenario could attack with the free one and he blocks with the one but he's just gonna block that with the one one. So this works out nicely because now he's forced to shuffle with the murmuring mystic unless there is a uh, there could be the one mana minus two minus oh I guess but I don't have much use for the free one anyway. Oh he does have it, okay, that's annoying. Uh, 
All right, that was bad. I don't think you would want to play this in this set, so I didn't play around. Okay, uh, let's see here exactly what this does. Well, the good thing is that it's an uh, aggressive card, so... Okay, I uh, don't want to do anything free combat, so let's just attack with all. And then I can maybe fight. Let's see here. Hopefully it's not, not, not another dusting lights. But I think they would have done this pretty combat. Okay, that's a trade. Okay. This makes sense. Okay, and now this has four damage on it, so I'm just gonna fight it and think they would have had if they had not a dazzling light, they would have done a pre combo so that uh, they can shunk. Okay, <laughs> my opponent deck was pretty sick. So let's see if we can take this down. The first match felt easy, or at least the first game. The second game was kind of interesting with the enchantment, but uh, these games were. I mean, this the second games I found felt pretty hard. Pretty hard. Gonna be on the draw here. I think this deck. Plays fine on the draw. This is not good enough. It's close though. I have a dead weight and a land and a lock. If this were like a signet, it would be much better. A lot of powerful cards, but the severed strands is kind of a mulligan in the sand anyway. So I'm gonna have to mulligan this sadly. This is not great either, but I think we're gonna have to roll with the punches. And uh, See what happens. Got some of the worst cards in my deck in my hand, unfortunately. So Boros then. And what a way to start. I wish I had a I want death touching. That's not the world I live in. One good thing is that if I play this, my opponent may not even want to attack into it because they may fear I have a uh, creature to discard. So the threat of activation could be a thing here. Although if they have that, they can just hold mana open. Okay, so my opponent is really all in aggro here. I really wish I had a 1-1 one -one death touch. Here. But all I have is lands. So the trooper could hold my opponent. Let's see. So my opponent plays a land, pumps this. This is a 4 5, which pumps this up to a 4 4. So my opponent doesn't even need to be afraid here. So I'm just going to play the lock just because I don't think their trooper does anything. And this could ramp me into something good on next turn. So I take 6 at least. And. Uh, what is this? So I think I'm gonna have to the sad play of casting severed strands on that just two for one. So this is not how we want to use severed strands, but that's where we are. And I think that's better to kill than this because. This also pumps up my opponent's creatures. Mm. So in an ideal world, dream world scenario, this could hold a fort next turn. I'm not holding my breath, but it's the only way thing I have. 
and yeah. So yeah, I'm probably dead because now I have to block the crater maker, but uh, oh. oh yeah, yeah, I have to because otherwise I'm gonna take too much damage. Okay, yeah, we're dead. We got overrun with a very weak draw, drew the worst cards in my deck. So let's see if we can sideboard in anything here. I think this matchup should be fine. I mean, if I had a death toucher, things would be much, much different. So I like the Hitchclaw Recluse. Uh, let's see if I can make my deck maybe a little bit slower. I may want to put in the Iron Shell Beetle. I don't like the Portuguese wine because it doesn't block very good against Mentor. Um, let's see here. I think Playcraft may be bad against an aggressive deck. My other cards are good. I'm gonna take out the Arbotium Elemental and put in Irish Elf Beetle. I think it's a. Uh, our creature's gonna outclass his creatures anyway. I mean, we're gonna have some large, affectionate Indrik, Lurkers, Fine Brokers, Wild Serator. I don't think we need this card to win. It is a nice card, but it's also incredibly slow. So let's play with this. See if we can do a little bit better. On the play at least, on the play. Yeah, this is much better, much better. I would love to draw a locket, but some death touches are really nice. All right, life linker. Attack here because I assume this card is going to become large in the future. And yeah, my opponent may block here if they have that kind of draw, but I didn't think they were going to do that. Lock it would be nice. Now, severed strands is also less painful than last game because I can just sacrifice the rack, which has already done its work. Take heart. Oh, that's the pump. Plus two, plus two, yeah, okay. And restrict guard. Okay. Um, I'm gonna have to sit back. I wonder if we're gonna block. Probably not. I mean, I can just block the two, two with my four, three. I don't like taking damage, but if you play Sky Knight Legionary, maybe it's too much damage. But I'm going to chill with blocking for one turn here. I think that my death touch is more valuable. I think I can take two damage. Yeah, so I can block this card, that's much better. Okay, so there's the severed strands, but I'm going to go for Ceratok because of mana efficiency. And because I don't super much need to kill any of my opponent's creatures. I have two good blockers for this. But my opponent can attack here. And I think at this point I'm going to start trading off. If I knew this, I would have done different, but then the counter would have gone on the hawk. Block like this, and... Okay, sure, straight. And that card, I don't think that card is too scary right now. I'll start with the stray. That's the red spell, right? So my opponent may not even be able to attack. Alright, and I'll attack for one. Because my opponent's not gonna block, and if they do, I'm happy. And then I think I'm gonna kill this thing. And we have a red 
hits, but okay, that's a lot of damage. So, five damage. But if I draw a land, I'm in good shape. I still have a level life, it's not like I'm dead. Okay, so what do I kill here? The lifelink is getting annoying, but if I play the Indrik and my opponent has a removal spell for it, I'm taking a lot, so I'm kind of tempted to kill this also. Uh, I think I don't need to worry about the 1 1 lifelink. This is just a safety mission. Kill that. Okay, so he could have been able to attack with the boar. I didn't do that. Time to draw a removal spell. No, that's not it. So, attack for four. Maybe I should have killed the flyer. I didn't know I was going to draw the Death Toucher, so the 4 would have been a problem. We should kill a flyer, but okay. Now we're in real trouble. Okay, that's gonna do it. We'll have to be content with a 2 1. I will see you around next time.